Coming here to perform at Hatfield House, this music in particular um, is an amazing experience because you can come to this house and you can see the gardens, you can see the paintings and the architecture, but to, to hear music that was written at this time and performed uh, at the time by musicians who knew the people who lived here um, brings it alive in a completely different dimension. But for us as performers, it's also a chance to really enter into that world that we call sort of historical practice. We, you know, we, we, we spend our lives telling people about research into the music and uh, the instruments and so on and the styles of singing, but to actually come into the buildings in which uh, this music was performed is a, is a way of, it's, it's, it's another type of research and, it, it's, I, and I certainly find singing that music, some of the words come to life in a completely different way, uh, whether it be sun shining through a very small window, uh, emitting some sort of light onto a room that is otherwise quite dark, reminds you that they, they lived in a world of darkness, they lived in a world without electricity and all the things we take for granted. So from that aspect, it's, it, you're sort of almost like in a time machine. Um, but also to come here and perform to people, actual uh, breathing uh, humans, is, is quite special because music um, is in itself something that, that, that works on one level. You can sit at home and play this and sing this music like people did in Dowland's day. They would take these books home and, and play them. But, but really the sort of magic of it, where it comes alive, that chemistry, involves a reaction from other people listening. These songs especially are written to be directed towards somebody. The poetry talks, it's very um, uh, sort of, uh, it's, it's people, it's private, but it's people speaking to their lover or to somebody who spurned them. But, but what we do as performers is direct that to a sort of general lover or spurned lover, which is the audience. So during lockdown and during the last few months, not being able to do that means that this music doesn't completely live. So that, that opportunity has been really, really magical for us. We sometimes think of this music as historical music, but you come into a place like this and you think, no, the, the historical past is now and it's the present and it's these people and we're continuing to tell the same stories to relatives and descendants of the same people, which is an incredibly thrilling experience. I came a little bit early and got my lute out of its case and played a few notes on my own, wandering up and down the long gallery as I've read Queen Elizabeth did. And the old instruments don't carry their acoustics round with them. They need a space in which to react. And suddenly it felt like this instrument was saying, yeah, I, this, is, this is it, I've come home here. These wooden, these wooden floors, these, this beautiful panelling and this ceiling is all speaking back to you as you play. And I think as instrument technology changed, instruments built in their own responses so that you could more easily withstand changes in acoustic. So I'm quite vulnerable to going to places that don't speak back to my instrument. So it's just glorious when you find a building that talks back to you. The fact that we're singing to a family, to a, a, a private audience and friends and family, um, it's a kind of nice way actually to ease back into, into performing to, to live human beings um, and, and a family who live and breathe in this space as well uh, and one who's connected um, very directly with John Dowland. Well, I was going, when I came in, um, as Liz says, she arrived before me and she set up and played a bit and I was coming up the stairs um, to this room and I could hear her playing and I imagined she was much closer than she was and I came around the corner and she was sitting halfway back in this long gallery and when I came to stand next to Liz and, and sing the sound was very present and I thought nobody would be able to hear that down there so it's actually incredible the way that the, the, the instrument and the room interact in that way. <laughs> 